Jimmy Conway from Goodfellas, played by Robert De Niro, was based on a real-life mobster. That mobster named Jimmy the Gent Buck was every bit the flash yet ruthlessly violent killer as his on-screen portrayal. His real buff name was in fact James Conway. He was born in 1931 in the Bronx, New York. At this time, the Bronx was home to many Irish and Italian American families. His mother was an ex-prostitute called Jane Conway, who was a single mother and did not know who Jimmy's dad actually was. Jimmy had a rough upbringing. His mother abandoned him at the age of two at an orphanage. His childhood was severely unstable, going from one foster home to the next. As is commonplace in these types of institutions, he was abused as a child. At 13 years old, he would witness death for the first time. His foster father was driving him around and turned around to smack Jimmy. In doing so, he lost control of the car, crashed and died. He finally would experience a healthy, loving family when the Buck family took him in to live with them in Queens, New York. This is the reason he took on the name Buck. However, even though he finally had a stable place to call home, he started to be drawn into criminality. He became acquainted with Dominic Cersani, aka Remo, who was an associate of the Colombo crime family, one wing of the Mafia. He was arrested for the first time at 18 for passing bad checks and was given a five-year prison sentence. But because he refused to rat out the higher-ups, he gained a solid reputation with Mafia members. He also began to mingle and form bonds with other Mafia members who were also locked up. When he was released, he worked as a bricklayer for a while. This built a solid, muscular frame on Jimmy, who was 6 foot 3 as well. He began to be noticed by Paul Vario, a capo in the Lucchese crime family. This was who Paulie from Goodfellas was based on. Buck then became associated with Vario and started doing work for the Lucchese crime family under his leadership. He became a feared bookmaker and loan shark. Jimmy used every bit of his sheer brute force and size to dish out violent punishments to anyone who did not pay up. He was a paradox of personality. He was known as the gent because he treated people with respect and politeness. But when it came to dealing with money, he flipped into a vicious animal. He became a married man when he tied the knot with a woman named Michelle Mickey Marin. The night before he cemented his love for her and marriage, he had one final issue he had to take care of first. He visited Michelle's ex-boyfriend who had been hassling her. He murdered him with a chainsaw. Undoubtedly, because he was such a respected figure and big money earner, he would have became a made man in the Mafia. However, because he did not have Italian heritage, he could not. He had many acquaintances in the city and many people owed him money. Often to repay debts, workers at Kennedy Airport would give him tip-offs of high-value items going into and leaving the airport. This is exactly how Jimmy knew exactly what cargo trucks to rob when they left the airport and they made huge amounts of money robbing various types of cargo. Air France cargo foreman Robert Frenchy McMahon was a degenerate gambler who owed Buck a lot of money. This is how Buck managed to get information about a large holding of cash he could steal from the airport. However, they needed the key from the airport's head of security. So what they did was pay a prostitute to seduce him. And when he was occupied, Henry Hill 
stole the keys and made copies. Henry Hill and Tommy DeSimone, as featured in Goodfellas, easily walked into the airport vault at Air France using the copied keys without resistance. Then they walked out with $480,000 in cash and $300,000 worth of jewellery. Buck would use some of his earnings to buy a bar very close to the airport called Robert's Lounge. This would become a mafia hangout, including an underground club. He would also use it as an operation to gather tips on the airport, as workers would often frequent the bar. Hijacking the trucks would continue and would be done with military precision. Jimmy would use Tommy as his attack dog when people refused to get in line with his business operations. For example, Tommy was sent to strong arm a foreman who refused to take a bribe. Unlike his on-screen portrayal, Tommy was actually a well-built unit. He was 6 foot 2 and around 230 pounds. However, the overzealous psychopathic De Simone beat him to death at his own front door. Jimmy also sold cigarettes he had smuggled in from North Carolina. He would buy in bulk large quantities as the tax in that state was far cheaper. He then took them to New York and sold them for a much cheaper price than official tax bound sellers. He used his old friend Remo to help transport the cigarettes. However, when he was caught, instead of keeping his mouth shut as a young buck had done for him, he turned informant. After finding out about the portrayal from one of his own sources, Jimmy took him for a drive. Tommy De Simone, who was sitting in the back seat, then strangled him to death with a wire. In 1971, made man Billy Bats, who once ran Jimmy Buck's loan sharking operation, was released from prison. There was a welcome home party at Robert's Lounge for Bats. Much like in Goodfellas, Bats began to insult Tommy about being a shoe shiner when he was younger. Tommy had known Bats since he was a child and had actually regularly shined his shoes. However, Tommy was now a fully fledged, large adult who was also a psychopathic, remorseless killer. Tommy attempted to attack him there and then but was stopped by Jimmy. But two weeks later he would get his chance at Henry Hill's nightclub, The Sweep. Bats, a member of the Gambino family, had been hassling Buck that night trying to muscle in on his business. Tommy came to the club that night and was again insulted by Bats. He told Jimmy to keep him there and he later returned with a pistol when all the customers had left. Buck pinned him to the ground while De Simone pistol whipped him. Thinking he was dead, they, along with Henry Hill, wrapped him in table covers and put him in the trunk. Killing a made man was a no-go in the Mafia, without prior approval. Doing so would mean you would be next in line to be killed. It turned out that Bats was still alive in the boot and began kicking it to try and escape. So, Jimmy then finished him off with the gun. They then buried the body in Connecticut. In 1972, Jimmy and Henry did a favour for an influential tipster named Casey Rosado. He had made a big gambling win in Florida, but Bookie Johnny Chacho refused to pay. They were able to beat him into giving over the money. However, they ran into problems when it was discovered Johnny Chacho's sister worked at the FBI as a clerical employee. This got back to the FBI and they were charged with extortion. They were given a hefty 10 year sentence for this. Much like in Goodfellas, 
they had an easy time in prison and had luxuries not available to ordinary prisoners. Henry Hill used his time to form new business contacts, including a mobster from Pittsburgh by the name of Paul Mazzi. In 1978, he was released after only four years. Jimmy Burke was released three months later. Mazzi would help Hill and Burke earn some quick money. They bet on college basketball teams after two players had been forced or coerced into shaving points. To avoid raising any suspicion, he used his bookmaker connections to spread the bets across the city. This made millions over the season. However, they would soon hit the big time with a huge heist. Marty Krugman, a bookmaker and associate of Buck, got a tip off about the Lufthansa air cargo. Again, at the airport there was a vault containing large amounts of untraceable cash. This tip off was brought to Henry Hill and Jimmy Buck. Intel showed that at 3am the airport complex was unguarded as that is when the night shift workers took their break. A crew would be assembled to do the heist, including Tommy DeSimone, Frenchie McMahon and Joe Manry. Parnell Stax Edwards would be responsible for getting rid of the cargo van. Jimmy's own son Frank would crash a car into any police vehicles that were in pursuit. On Monday, December 11th, 1978, four masked gunmen went into JFK airport and held up the airport workers in the break room. They tied them up but took the ground supervisor with them, who was then forced to open the vault. They then loaded up a van for half an hour. 72 boxes of cash, bullion and jewellery were taken. There was no reason for a crash car as they escaped smoothly. In total, $5 million plus $800,000 in goods were stolen. This was, at that time, the biggest cash heist in US history. Jimmy paid off everyone involved in the heist. However, he paid them based on agreed earlier estimates. They did not realise they would be stealing $5 million. So, other crew members started to demand more money. However, with a psychopath devoid of empathy sitting on top of $5 million, he began to think he would be better just eliminating them and keeping the lot. Furthermore, it meant there would be no one to snitch on him if they were caught by police. The police knew who had done the heist but could not prove it. Buck and his gang were under constant surveillance. Stax Edwards made the first mistake as he did not dispose of the heist van like he was supposed to. To add insult to injury, he carelessly left it parked illegally outside his girlfriend's apartment. This meant the police could get evidence from the van including fingerprints. Understandably, Edwards was assassinated by Tommy DeSimone. He was shot to death in his own bed. Krugman, who had tipped off the gang, went missing after demanding his half million dollar share of the takings. Later, Tommy DeSimone, who had been lured into a mafia meeting with the promise he would become a made man, was assassinated. The Gambino crime family had done the hit in revenge for the Billy Bats murder. The hit was done at the basement of John Gotti's club. They allegedly then cut him in half with a chainsaw and dumped the body in the Atlantic Ocean. The body of Richard Eaton was also found in Brooklyn. Jimmy had previously paid him $250,000 for cocaine so he could start a distribution business. However, Eaton had given him fake cocaine. He was found frozen in the back of an abandoned lorry. He
he had a broken neck and his wrists and hands had been tied with wire. According to Henry Hill, it was Jimmy himself that did the murder. Frenchie McMahon and Joe Manry were also found shot to death in a car. Ten people associated with the heist were murdered during this time. Louis Werner, a cargo agent who had given Marty Krugman the initial tip-off, was arrested. He agreed to testify against the gang, but almost anyone involved was now dead, which meant he was little use. It was Henry Hill that would bring the operation down. He had begun moving large quantities of coke, but one of his dealers set him up and in 1980 he was arrested. When he was released on bail, he met with Jimmy. Jimmy gave him a location in Florida to go to to escape the police. However, Hill believed this was a move to have him assassinated. So, Hill instead went to the FBI and started cooperating against Buck. He was given immunity in exchange for his testimony. Not only did he spill the beans on the heist, but he also gave evidence of murders not connected to it. Buck was sent down for the Boston points shaving scheme he had carried out. He was given 20 years. He was then given a further 25 years for the murder of Richard Eaton but was never convicted for masterminding the heist. He died in prison of lung cancer in 1996.